Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Ray again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be continuing the Unity 3D fundamentals. I'm going to focus on how we can actually create c -sharp scripts and how we can get components from the inspector. So let's go into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so in the previous videos we look at how to create prefabs. We also look at the life cycle events in other videos. So I want to focus on this new video on scripting and how do we script when working with Unity? What it's you know what can we access? How do we access some game objects? How do we send information back and forth? So there's gonna be a lot of stuff that I that I'm gonna be talking about here, and hopefully by the end of this video you have a better idea of what's available and how do you go about creating a C sharp script when it comes to Unity. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new scene because I have a lot of things going on in this one. So let's go into scenes and I'm going to duplicate the sample scene. This one is going to be called scripting. And I'm going to double click to create it. And I'm going to delete everything except the cube. We're just going to have a cube and basically just one camera, which is going to be the camera front. So the other thing that I'm going to do is on the cube, I'm going to set it to zero, zero, zero. I'm going to remove the, the rotation, set it back to zero, and basically that's what we're going to end up with. So I also want to center the position of the, of the ground, something like that, and basically centering and, and focusing on the cube. Excellent. So, so how, do you, how do you actually add a script in when working with Unity? And a lot of people get really afraid of coding, and you might not be very familiar with coding. So coding in C Sharp with Unity is actually very, very straightforward. I, I worked with C++ in the past and it was very tedious when working with Unreal. And a lot of people might be familiar with that, but I really couldn't understand it that well. So with C Sharp, things become much easier. It's a lot easier to, to read. And I know that I could have debates, some people saying it's not easy to read, some people might say it is easy to read. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a new script so that we can basically control the rotation of this cube. And we also are going to be detecting, you know, what are we colliding with when we when we basically hit the ground. So if we hit play right now, let's see what, happen, what happens with the scene. So we can see that the cube actually is going through. And to avoid that, I'm going to go into the cube. And then let's make sure that we have the... Looks like we have his trigger set to off, so that shouldn't cause a problem. Let's go into our ground, and we have, oh, okay, I see. We have the boss collider on the ground set to true, so let's disable that. Now let's hit play. And we can see that the cube is now, you know, it's, it's actually not going through because it's not a trigger collider, what it's colliding with. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the debugger example that we created for the previous session. I'm gonna do that as well here and we should be good to go let me make sure that i have the camera set at this point so i'm going to select my camera go to game game object align with view okay excellent so how do we actually go in about adding a script so i'm going to select the cube click on add component new script and we're going to call this one the cube rotator rotator excellent Okay, perfect. So now we have a script that is associated with this game object. If we hit play, there's really nothing that's gonna happen because we haven't really added any code to the script. So let's go ahead and click on assets, open C Sharp project to open the C Sharp project. And it looks like the readme file opened up by default. That's fine. I'm gonna go into my cube rotator and I'm gonna focus on this area. So, so right now by default, Unity it's adding a uh, basically a class that inherits from auto behavior so anytime you add a new class to unity a new script to unity it's going to always inherit from auto behavior so that's what game objects are inheriting from the start in the update that's going to be the default events that get added by default so if i were to add something in here let's say that i do debug.log by the way, debug.log is something that I use quite a bit whenever I'm, I'm, I'm basically do, giving a session. And what it allows me to do is basically put things on the console without actually having much of interaction. So I can say, okay, the start meta is getting executed. 
and actually start me at the gotta execute it and I can close that and then the update it's gonna be the same thing update meta got executed now if I go back into unity and hit play you're gonna see that that it's getting printed to the screen so it's really handy when it comes to you know if you want to debug something and you want to see something happening so you start method get executed so that's what we see on the console update method get executed so that's also what I see on the console so what if I wanted to know for some reason what I'm colliding with? And and I did a you know I gave you an overview of how that works in the collider session that I did previously, but I'm gonna do it one more time so that you understand how that works. For, so right now I have is trigger set to off, meaning that I'm gonna be detecting collisions. So if I go back into Unity, into C sharp, and we go here, I'm gonna do a void on collision, enter, and it's gonna hit enter and perfect so the other thing that i'm going to do here is just going to do debug.log other because i want to detect what i'm colliding with so what i'm doing on the cube rotator i am raising and on trigger enter so whenever i enter a collision with an object i'm going to be displaying the name of that object so now let's go into unity i'm going to hit play and we should see what we're colliding with in the console excellent so so what we're seeing is that we enter the collision, the collision is the ground, and we're seeing the name. So I'm gonna hit play. So, so what if I wanted to know, for whatever reason, I wanted to connect the cube to the ground. So one quick way to do that is you can do, you can use the inspector variables to do that. And right now, I'm gonna collapse everything here so that you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. So I'm collapsing that. So right now I have the cube, the cube rotator script associated with it. So let's do one thing. Let's go back into Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna add a new private variable. And this one is gonna be called the, let's do game object. It's gonna be of type game object and I'm gonna say ground because I wanna connect to the ground. And I'm gonna make this one serializable. So I could do it this way or I could also make this public and then I wouldn't need this. The reason why I do it this way is because of habits. I don't want other scripts to have access to these variables, so I make it private and then serializable, make it basically accessible through the inspector. You could have done it also this way, and I can show you both ways so you can see that they both show. So we can just call this one public ground. This one is gonna be called private ground. And you can see that both of them are gonna be displayed. So if I go into Unity and I let Unity compile, you're gonna see that there's two new variables that show up under the queue rotator. And we can see private ground, this is gonna be the private variable that we created as basically with a serializable field attribute. And also the public ground, it's gonna be the same, the same object that I'm gonna associate with it, but it's public, so that's what is getting exposed through the script. So, so these are what we call serializable fields. So anything that shows in here that you can you can see through the inspector under your script are, are variables that are gonna be serializable. And the cool thing with this is I can actually go in and say, okay, I wanna associate the ground with it. I wanna associate the ground with that. So this is one of the biggest and, and most powerful things about Unity is I can actually associate things together through the editor. I can associate the ground with the cube rotator. And what that allows me to do is I can go back into, into Unity and I can say, okay, now I have access to this, I already associated. I, I didn't need to find that in the hierarchy, write some crazy code to be able to get it. So now what I can do here, I can say, okay, debug that log. And in this instance, it's very simple what we're doing. I can say, okay, this is my private ground. And I wanna know what the name of the private ground is, which we know what it is. But this is for demonstration purposes. I can say that, and I'm gonna close I'm basically gonna copy that same line. I'm gonna say public ground, and we're gonna grab that public ground. Now if we go back into Unity, and I hit play, you're gonna see what happens. And we can see that, I can see the private ground, the name is ground, and public ground, the name is ground. So this is really powerful because I have access to the ground game object. If I have, for instance, I had another game object here, let's say that I duplicate this one, I go back into cube. I don't really need to change the code to be able to display the name of this other game object. This could be, you know, the ceiling if you wanted to. And if I go here to the cube, 
associate the ceiling with that and hit play you're gonna see that the name of it is gonna change because now I'm associating a ceiling with the public ground property and if I hit play you're gonna see that we got the private ground ground and public ground ceiling of course this is not a practical example this is just a demo so that you understand what I'm doing so what if you wanted to for instance get a different component from this cube let's say that I wanted to know that I wanted to get that, that box collider so you can go we can go back into Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna say I'm gonna add a new variable here let's say that I didn't want to have it exposed I could say private I could say collider and if you notice it was a box collider that I had so I can say box collider and in the start method or I could say void awake and let me undo what I did looks like that out of completion try to do things for me and sometimes it's not very helpful so we can do box collider equal get component and I can say get the component of this game object which is of type box collider and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say debug.log and I'm gonna say get the box collider component and if we got it we can say box collider that name which we know that we're gonna get it because we know that there is a box collider associated with this game object so now we can go back into unity and we can let it compile and it normally takes a few seconds to get compiled and now we can hit play and we can see got the box collider component cube so this is really powerful like I said before because now we have not only control of the game objects on the scene but we also have controls of components on the scene so I could have used the get component to get this component I could have used it to get this other component even to get this rigid body component so this is really powerful like I said because you can get anything from the game at all times so that's all I'm going to be talking about today if you guys have any questions let me know through the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you guys